today we are going to learn the um, carving of maxillary right central incisor. First, try to take a block and divide into a crown part and the root part. As we know, the crown part is around 10.5 millimeter. Try to keep it as a 11 millimeter. Take a scale and divide the crown part. First thing is division of the crown part, which is around 11 millimeter. So we have to divide the whole block into a crown which is around 11 millimeters and the root which is around 13 millimeters. Try to keep it as around 15 millimeters. So roughly we had divided the crown into a crown and the root. The next thing is we have to mark the buccal side, lingual side, mesial side and the distal side. So as we know the buccal side which is otherwise called as the labial side. So try to keep it as L. Mark it as a L. Since we are going to carve the right maxillary central incisor, you should make sure that you should mark your mesial side and distal side properly. But before going into the mesial side and the distal side, the exact opposite side of the labial side is the palatal side. So mark the palatal side also. Try to put as P. As we can see, now we can able to see the P. The second step is very very important in carving of a central incisor. That is marking your labial side, palatal side, mesial side and your distal side. The next thing is divide the labial side into three equal parts. Okay? Three equal parts means this part is called as the incisive one third, this part is called the middle one third, this part is called as the cervical one third. So divide the crown into three equal parts. As we can see, we have divided the whole crown into three equal parts. The next step is you have to carve the labial side and the palatal side. Before carving a labial side and the palatal side, try to draw a midline in the mesial side and the distal side. In the mesial side and the distal side, you draw a exact midline. Why? Because we are going to uh, we are going to make sure that the incisal edge is exactly in the center of the block. That's why we are drawing a midline in the mesial side and the distal side. Don't draw it on the labial side and the palatal side. The labial side and the palatal side, we will never draw a midline. We will be drawing only a midline in the mesial side and the distal side. The next thing is you have to carve the labial side. If you want to carve the labial side, okay, try to keep it on a mesial side or a distal side and try to draw from the middle one third towards the center of the tooth. Okay, a sloping line towards the center of the tooth. There is a sloping. Okay, so you try to draw it on the mesial side as well as in the distal side. So, in the labial side. The next thing is we are going to carve it. So, keep the block and slowly carve it. Don't force the carver. Now we can able to see from the middle one third it is sloping towards the center uh, towards the center. Okay, similarly on the mesial side, if you see I had drawn the line and it has moved towards this area. Now what you do is we have to carve the palatal side. The palatal side is concave corner. So try to draw on the mesial side and the distal side as concavity. Okay, don't draw it in the straight line. Okay, try to draw it as concave. Okay, similarly, on the distal side also, I am going to draw it as a concave. Don't draw it as a uh, straight line. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to remove the extra bit of okay. For carving the lingual side, try to use this part, okay, this part of the carver, so that you can give it the concave T. This part of the carver, give it a look. Don't give too much of concavity in the palatal side. We can finish it at any point. Can you see the concave? 
concavity, okay, the concavity on the palatal side and a straight line on the labial side. So, this is the labial side and this is the palatal side. The next step in this is you have to give the lingual construction, that is the palatal construction. The palatal side or the lingual side be converged, which is called as a lingual construction. So, what you have to do is you have to converge the lingual side. The lingual side is always smaller than the labial side. Okay. You can see it from this point, okay, it is sloping to Similarly, I am going to give the even sloping on the other side also. It is called as a lingual convergence. Don't cross the crown part. Okay. You are not supposed to enter into the root part. You should try to keep it only in the crown part. As we can see this, the palatal side. The palatal side is Okay, this is the palatal side. The palatal side is smaller when compared to that of the labial side. So, we have to finish almost the carving. The next step is you have to carve the mesial side and the distal side. Okay, the mesial side is as we say it is straighter and the distal side is somewhat con convex. Okay, so what you do is take the labial side and draw the mesial side which is roughly straight. Why? The distal side is somewhat concave, convex, sorry, convex. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is, I am going to carve the mesial side. Okay, I am carving the, as, as we can see, uh, the, I have drawn the line and I am maintaining in the same position. Similarly, I am going to carve the Now we have got the mesial side and the distal side. Okay, the teeth is almost done. The next step is you have to check your labiolingual dimension. The labiolingual dimension is a little bit larger in this uh, condition. You have to reduce it to the proper thing, proper dimension. So what you do is you try to remove from the cervical one third. Evenly reduce on the mesial side and the palatal side. Don't just remove the vans only from the palatal side. Evenly you should remove from the palatal side and your labial side. The next step is it is almost done. Except for two things, the mesio incisal angle should be sharp, the distal incisal angle should be round. Except for this, everything has been finished in the crown portion. The next thing is we have to uh, carve the root portion. As we know that the dimension for the root is around 13, try to keep it as around 15. Draw, first thing is try to divide the root portion into three equal parts. Let us see cervical one third, middle one third and the apical one third. Make sure that uh, you divide on the all, all parts just like our crown. You can divide into three equal parts. What you do is draw a straight line, okay? Draw a straight line, the exact half from that it should converge. Okay, similarly, draw from the midline exactly the center or the epical one third, try to converge this area. Similarly, draw the same thing on the parallel side also. So, what you do is you try to remove the wax from your mesial side and the distal side. Try to carve the wax, don't chop the wax.
calculus. Now what you do is take your mesial side and the distal side. Okay, take the mesial side and draw the same thing. What you do is divide the root into three equal parts. Okay, this one is the cervical one third, middle one third, and the apical one third. Chop the bank. Exactly. This is what is called as the base. Okay. Try to remove the base carefully. Don't break it. Try to remove it very carefully. Give enough wax just below the apex. So in case if there is some problem, we can is the apex is not sharp. So what you are going to do is you are going to try to make the, the apex not suspended. The other things what you are doing is you can see this line angle. This line angle is sharp. We don't want this sharp line angle. So what you are going to do is we are going to blend this line angle or in other words I can use the word called as a rounding of the line angle. Try to round off the line angle. Make sure that the crown and the root are in level with each other. Don't make the root bigger. They should be first thing is it should be in level with the crown. The next thing is we will be reducing the root. The root should be always smaller in dimension when compared to the crown. Not I'm talk, I'm not talking about the root length, rather I'm talking about the uh, in the width of the root. The width of the root is always smaller when compared to the crown. Labial aspect. Okay, this is the labial aspect. One thing what you are missing is this is the right central incisor. Okay, so this side should be your mesial side. The mesio incisal angle should be sharp. It should be sharp, and the distro incisal angle should be rounded. So what I am going to do is this is the distro incisal angle. I am going to round off this distro incisal angle. This is very very important. Okay, the distro incisal angle rounded when compared to the, the mesial incisal angle which should be sharper. Keep in your mind it should be sharper. This angle should be sharp and this angle should be round. The next thing is what we are going to do is we are going to carve the uh, cervical uh, uh, line. The cervical line is 10.5 millimeter from this point. Okay. From this point it should be 10.5 millimeter and it is convex. Okay. Don't make it or in other words, I can use the word called as a semi-lunar in shape. Okay. As you can see, this should be semi-lunar. Okay. Similarly, the exact opposite side should be your lingual side. The lingual side should be, it should be semi-lunar. The next thing is, your mesial side and the distal side. Your mesial side should be concave. Join this mesial and uh, labial side and the lingual side. This will be like Similarly, we can do it on the other side also. On cape. Okay. The next thing is just below this cervical line, how to reduce the root. What we are going to do is we are trying to reduce or we are just removing a layer of wax from the root, making sure that. 
that the root is smaller when compared to the ground. side is straight, it is somewhat straight, the meso incisal angle is sharp, the distal side is convex and the disto incisal angle is rounded, the lingual side is smaller when compared to the labial side and you can see the lingual fossa which is M shaped, the root and the cervical. Once I polish it, you can able to see how good this carving looks like. It is very simple to have a maxillary circular. This is a polish tool, you can able to see the crown cervical line, the root, okay. this is the labial aspect, mesial side is straight, distal side which is convex, mesial incisal angle is sharper, distal incisal angle is rounded and when you go to the lingual side, this part is the cingular, this part is the lingual fossa. You can see the root, sometimes the root tip can be tilted towards your distal side, a slight distal tilt can be seen in the distal side also. aspect, the labial side which is convex, the lingual side is concave convex, you can see the singular, this is the root, but make sure that your incisal tip and the root tip be exactly in the same layer, in the mesial side and in your distal side, try to make it just exactly in the same layer, the labial side, lingual side, labial side is convex, lingual side is concave convex, and you can see the cervical side which is concave, and the distal side, and the labial side, it is convex or semi-lingual. 